tell you what, if the left and the drive-bys are not careful, they're going to run out of outrage. Actually, who am I kidding? They'll never tire of being outraged at Trump. The first thing that you need to understand is if you think all of this outrage and all of these protests are spontaneous and specific to the elements of this executive order, you need to stop thinking that because that is not what any of this is about. What all of this is about is the preordained, prearranged Democrat Party strategy of unseating Donald Trump and opposing him. And it is nothing more than total resistance to everything. It doesn't matter what it is. This is not going to stop. You, I told you, Trump doesn't have anybody but you. He doesn't have the media supporting him like Obama did. He doesn't have the Congress support. Let me tell you, the real choke point here and the real weak point, the real problem Trump has here is not these protesters. The real problem he's going to have is the Republicans in Congress sticking with him. This is the kind of thing that they've caved to I don't know how many times. This is the kind of uprising in the media, uprising on the left, that just sends chills down the spines of the average ordinary Washington Republican. I mean, Trump won. They won. They have all three branches now. What are they waiting on? What are they waiting on? Well, these protests, in part, are designed to paralyze Republicans. And if they paralyze Trump, well, that's icing on the cake and an added bonus, but that's not going to happen. This stuff, all of these protests, which are not tied specifically to this executive order. You've got to believe that. You must understand this. It's crucial going forward you be able to keep in perspective what they show you on TV and not fall for the narrative. This is as much about paralyzing Republicans as it is Trump. Because if they can paralyze Republicans, they can stop the Trump agenda. They can stop anything Trump wants to try to implement. Now, that's who these people are really aiming at. And they'll go to the... How can you be on the side of a man who wants to deny civil rights to civil refugees who are fleeing war-torn strife in their native... It's that kind of approach. The protests at the airports, bought and paid for by George Soros, pre-arranged. People have been sitting and waiting for the moment to be cued to action. They were not minding their own business running around, taking care of things, and living their lives, and all of a sudden feeling outraged over Trump's executive order. They have been waiting at the starting gate. They have been poised and waiting for marching orders, and the executive order was issued, and the marching orders went out. The protests are, are typical of the way the media does things. The narrative here, the picture being painted, is that every protest is a representation of a majority of thinking in the country that Trump's election was fraudulent and is an aberration, that a majority of people actually did not elect Trump, and therefore what he's doing does not have the sanction and approval of a majority of Americans because the election and he are illegitimate. The protests are being portrayed as representative of the majority of the people in the country, and not only that, the media portrayal makes it look, as they always do, as though everybody agrees with the line of attack on Trump. And this is designed to suck you in. It's designed to weaken Trump supporters and to have you start questioning your uh, decision to vote for him, to question your support for Trump. It's all part of the plan. It's not specific to this executive order. They have been waiting for the first opportunity to in mass engage, and this is it. To give you an idea of how selective the outrage is, have you noticed the reaction to an actual terror attack is what? You better not, you better not climb down on the Muslim chair. You better not start blaming Islam. You better not. And we're going to create a backlash. We can't create a backlash. Actual terror attacks are, are, are met with a yawn. In comparison to this manufactured outrage over a temporary executive order. One of the things I heard people say 
This is so ill-timed. There was no advance warning. You didn't even give the uh, relevant uh, organizations and bureaucracies a chance to, to gin up and get ready for it. Right, okay. So you're going to have a temporary ban from seven countries, and you announce it, and it's going to be two weeks down the road that you're going to implement it. What's going to happen in those two weeks? The borders are going to be flooded. Every bad actor and who knows who else is going to do their damnedest to get into the country before it goes into effect. If you're going to do something like this, you have to do it this way. And I'm telling you, the Democrat Party, folks, do not doubt me on this. The Democrat Party is a minority party that is losing its grip, that is losing touch, that is losing seats, that is losing its power. And these protests are part of them is to create the illusion that they are still the majority, that they represent a majority of thinking in the country, that they are more powerful than they've ever been, and none of it's true. This is George Soros bought and paid for and organized for the most part. It is not spontaneous. It's not specific to this. They have manuals and talking points, things to say when it's a protest of uh, or when it's an executive order on uh, ethnicity or uh, foreign nationals of any kind. Or, and if it comes to Supreme Court nominee, then they're going to have another manual that tells them what to say as they hit the protest march for that. It's not spontaneous. It is planned. because. And th- by the way, this is all the Democrat Party has. The simple fact of the matter is that the drive-by media... And the American left despise conservatism, and now they despise Trump, more than they are afraid of terrorism or any other real enemy of this country. The Democrat Party has not changed. The Democrat Party is still the party that lost, and they haven't done anything to improve their standing. All of this is theater, folks. It is theater designed to make it look like everything happening now is a mistake or the result of fraud or Russian hacking, that a majority of people didn't really like Trump, that people do not support what Trump is doing. However, uh, Reuters did venture out into the heartland of America, and they can't find anybody upset with Trump's executive order in Iowa. They can't find anybody upset in the Midwest with it, and they're seething over it. Folks, I was telling people over the weekend who are alarmed at how often and how large these protests seem to be, they materialize. And I I told everybody that asked me about it to calm down, that it is the strategy, this is the official policy of Trump opposition to simply resist everything, because that's all they can do. They can't stop it unless the Republicans cave and join them. If the Republicans stay unified, House and Senate, and uh, in support of the Trump agenda, then there's nothing the Democrats can do. Hence, all these protests and all of these people. You know, the drive-bys are expert at making the things they believe seem like they represent the vast majority of thinking in the country. They're very good at making it appear that everybody agrees with the take on all this that the drive-bys have. The drive-bys are outraged by this. Civil libertarians are outraged. People cannot believe that Trump would be so inhumane and so callous. And they report this in a way that makes you think everybody in America thinks the same thing. And I'm telling you, they don't. Not even close. But that's what the narrative becomes. And then the real threat that Trump faces is from traditional Republicans afraid and scared of this kind of thing because they fall for the trick. Do not doubt me. The objective is to destroy Donald Trump. 